Just realized I've been making fishing videos for exactly three years now. So, there's that. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a huge fly fisherman. Welcome back to another episode of Huge Fly Fisherman. Today's video is gonna be about how to fly fish on a budget. Real grown up stuff. I think the general perception is that there's a big financial barrier to becoming a huge fly fisherman. Well, that is not true. You can spend a lot of money on fly fishing if you want to, but you don't have to. All right, let's talk about two different kinds of fishermen. First, there's the kitted out guy. He's got all the newest gear, none of it is cheap. He goes to Alaska once a year, and he's a pretty bad fisherman. His name's Richard from Houston, maybe you know him. He's got really nice loafers. Yeah, this guy sucks, both at fishing and at life. He doesn't even like fishing. The only reason he's out there is because he heard it was cool and maybe his golfing buddies want to mix it up and try fly fishing every now and then. He's gonna get all the newest gear every year, he hires guides every time he goes fishing, and he'll probably fish some exotic destination that we'll never go to. He's a huge fly fisherman. No, he's not. He's trying to buy his way into being a good fisherman. What he doesn't know is that you can't buy your way in. It doesn't work. You can't buy a good cast or a good drift. That takes time and practice and a lot of paying your dues. Anyway, I digress. Let's talk about the other type of fisherman. He or she is 14 years old. He's got a 25 year old fiberglass rod from grandpa's garage. The reel is taped to the rod handle, ancient fly line, no proper leader, just some 10 pound stren. In his pocket is a pair of fingernail clippers and a Ziploc bag with six rusty flies and he's on a bike. Does that sound like you or anyone you know? Yeah, I can relate also. This kid is paying his dues and he's learning something every time he goes out. This kid fishes. I have so much more respect for this kid than Richard from Houston. Anyway, my point is that you don't need a bunch of fancy gear to catch fish, but there are some things that you should not skimp on. So if you're mowing lawns and saving money for some gear, listen up, because I'm gonna tell you how to spend your money wisely. Let's start with your fish pole, your fly rod. You don't need top of the line, but you also shouldn't get the cheapest rod you can find. Splurge a little bit if you can. Don't have $1,000 for a fly rod? Yeah, same here. That's called being a normal person. But you should try to scrape together a couple hundred bucks at least. But Ben, there's rods on Amazon for like $40. Yes, there are, and they suck. Well, I got me a cheap fly pole and I catch plenty of fish. Great, that's neat, but I'd bet you catch even more with slightly better gear. What I mean is this. The cheapest rod you're gonna find is gonna be heavy. You won't be able to feel your cast as well. It'll be made with cheap components that'll break. It won't have any sort of warranty, so when it breaks, you're just hosed, and you will break it. If you can bump your price point up to a couple hundred bucks, you'll get a much better product. You'll get a rod that's light, responsive, has better components, and a warranty. Look at it this way. If you know you're gonna stick with fly fishing for a while and you buy that cheap rod, you'll just end up buying a better one later. Just spend the money up front. And while having the most expensive gear won't make you a great caster, having at least a decent rod will shorten your learning curve with casting. There are a lot of opinions about that, so if you wanna argue with me about it, just leave a comment in the comment section. Now let's talk about your reel. You can call it a winch if you wanna sound cool. This is where you can save some money. You can skimp on the reel. Part of what makes an expensive reel cost so much is the drag system. A good reel has a smooth, powerful, and sealed drag. You need that if you're catching big, strong fish that make long, powerful runs. Tarpon, bonefish, marlin, albacore, stuff like that. Maybe redfish or carp. If you're just fishing your trout, you don't need a fancy drag. Well, unless you're Gareth from Trout Hunting NZ, that dude catches a giant trout. So for trout fishing, you can get a cheap reel. Bass fishing, cheap reel. Pike fishing, cheap reel. Get it? Good. Now, one thing I would look at is what the reel is made of. You don't want plastic, you want metal. You don't want cast metal, you want a reel that's machined. Other than that, just get one that's appropriately sized and balanced to your rod and pick which hand you're gonna reel with. You're good to go. All right, next let's talk about fly lines. This is where I go premium. 
Get the best lines that you can afford. A premium fly line is gonna be around 100 bucks. Suck it up and pay for it. What you're getting is performance and longevity. A premium fly line will cast better because it has a slicker coating or a textured surface or maybe just a better taper. It will also last longer. When a fly line gets all cracked and dirty, it's done. Throw it away or upcycle it. You really should look at fly lines as consumables. They're not gonna last forever. You replace them as needed. My most used fly lines get replaced every year. I think getting 50 to 100 days out of a fly line is pretty reasonable. I don't expect any more than that. And I just wanna say, there is something really special about the smell of a brand new fly line. It's like soothing and exciting all at the same time. I can't explain it, but I like it. Maybe you're wondering what fly lines I like to use. I'll break it down for you. I use fly lines for like 20 years. They have some great tapers and the lines cast great for about a week before they fall apart. For the last few years I've been using uh. and I like <laughs> a lot better than the uh. lines. They cast great and they've been holding up a lot longer than the <laughs> lines. Sorry nothing personal. My viewers want to know this kind of stuff and I'm happy to tell them. Maybe you should make better lines or maybe you shouldn't have dropped me cool videos though. Okay, on the end of our fly line is our leader and tippet, so let's talk about that. You'll need a variety of leader lengths and tippet sizes, but you don't need a full run of everything. I don't ever carry 6X because that's for dorks, and how often do you really need 0X? You can also save some money by not using fluorocarbon. The only fluoro that I have is bite tippet for tarpon. That's it. I basically don't use fluoro ever, and I'm butt hooking plenty of fish. If you're fishing techie stuff, I see the benefit, but I don't think it's crucial. Again, if you want to fight about it, leave a comment. Okay, next, flies. I tend toward the premium on this, but you don't have to. These days, it seems like everyone wants to find the cheapest flies online that aren't garbage. Well, all I can say is good luck. What you see on your screen might not be what arrives in the mail. Maybe you want to start tying your own flies so you can save some money. Well, you should learn to tie your own flies because it's fun and awesome, but it won't save you any money. You'll just buy more tying stuff. Okay, this is getting a little long, so let's burn through a few things before we wrap it up. Sunglasses. I go back and forth on this one. Watch my video about it. Right now I'm on the Good Sunnies program, but that might change. How about waders and boots? First of all, do you even need them? If you're just stomping around in creeks in the summer, wear some quick dry pants and put your Crocs in four wheel drive and you're good to go. If you're still heading in the winter, get some waders and boots by all means and get some good ones cause you're gonna beat the hell out of them. How about packs and stuff? Your call. Again, do you even need it? If you can go fishing with just some nippers and a fly box in your pocket, go that route. But if you need an entire fly shop with you to go catch a creek chub, you'll need to figure out whatever gear carrying system works for you. Vest, backpack, chest pack, there are lots of options. Or just do what I do and put it all in a boat. I'm probably forgetting some stuff, but we'll finish on food and drink. Premium fried chicken is a must. Publix has the best generally available chicken. Again, we can fight about it in the comments if you want. As far as beer, any cheap crappy beer is good as long as it's not hams. All right, listen, if you wanna learn to fly fish, you can do it on a reasonable budget. All you really need is a rod, reel, line, leader, some flies, some cutters, and you can get it done. Please wear sunglasses for safety though. Well, I hope that was helpful and you can make some more informed decisions about how to spend your money on your fly fishing gear. Also, don't forget, you can spend your money at hugeflyfisherman.com. It helps me make more videos for you. It's a pretty direct correlation. I'll be back as soon as I can with another huge fly fisherman video for you. Until then, remember, cheap beer tastes the same warm as it does cold, so you could save some money on some ice too. Stay huge. Cheers to three years. I can't cheers you right now, I'm driving.